peaches were on sale this week because I guess they're they're peaking and they've been very inexpensive. So I've been wanting to make a peach dessert of some type, like cake maybe. So I decided to do upside down, peach upside down cake, um, a, another Melissa Clark recipe from the New York Times. Um, I'm a Times subscriber, so uh, I can use the recipe box and all that. So a lot of my recipes will come from the New York Times just because they're good. <laughs> anyway, I'll take you along for this little venture. I have my dry ingredients mixed and now I'm gonna work in butter. I, uh, the recipe calls for a food processor. I don't have one. Um, and when I make biscuits and I like to use the old fashioned knives, um, I've tried all different types of ways and this is just my favorite, like pastry blender, whatever. Used all those, um, but I really prefer to just use a combination of knives and maybe my fingers a little bit. And oh, yeah, look who's here helping me. Could you please get down, sir? So I thought I'd show you what it looks like when you get into it. It's a lot more peach than biscuit, which I kind of love. Um, I'm gonna have a bite right now. It looks so amazing. I have a feeling it's pretty sweet. That was a lot of sugar. We're supposed to be making a caramel. And to be honest, I, I um, poured a lot. <laughs> on the counter that had to be cleaned up, but it still seems pretty sweet. Oh my God, it's so good. Kind of interested in just trying the biscuit. Wow, really, really yummy. Mm. All right, hope this inspired you or I don't know, you enjoyed it. <laughs> Hello, how are you today? I hope you're doing well. Welcome new viewers. I've had quite a few new subscribers and I thank you for that. That really helps me get um, more, you know, like suggestions from YouTube. YouTube's algorithms, don't get me started. <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much. I. Thank you so much for liking the video, for subscribing, and for um, commenting. I love reading your comments. Uh, it's a nice place to kind of share ideas and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I deeply, deeply appreciate that. And I, yeah, I wanted to just get into um, what I've been up to. My name is Shannon, and this is my Knitter's Life series, season three. So it's, I'm on my third year of doing this Knitter's Life format where you get a little bit of stuff that's happening in my life, as well as, or things that I've done, as well as, um, yeah, 
uh, knitting, knitting and, and sometimes spinning and any other uh, crochet occasionally. I haven't crocheted in a while. Uh, but primarily knitting, lots of knitting. Uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed <laughs> that Kitchen Chaos segment um, with the upside down peach cake. Um, I do want to note that the little guy was not left unsupervised for a second. Um, he was very funny about the, the stove. I don't use the stove a lot. I haven't really yet. Um, I make dinner on it every couple days and that's usually pretty quick, but just, you know, sit there and have something simmering for a while. Um, is not typical and uh, yeah he was kind of very curious but also pretty freaked out um, he could feel he knew that it was hot he never came over he often will walk around the sink he never came over to the other side of the sink while I was cooking which was which was great um, but I didn't leave him alone he was cracking me up though he wanted a better view so we like wedged himself up on my coffee maker <laughs> between the in the few inches between the coffee maker and the cupboard oh my goodness um i'm coming to you from northern new jersey i actually live just across the hudson river from new york um and you probably saw a clip there was a clip at the beginning um of this city Oh my god so we're I was about to say we're having a thunderstorm <laughs> that lightning was intense um, and I, I follow this is Leslie on or this is Les I think it's Les might be Leslie on uh, on Instagram and her car got hit struck by lightning that was actually that way my car is parked that way um, yeah and it cracked her the glass the moon roof on her uh, roof Let's hope that doesn't happen. Um, yeah, so we're we're having the effects of the hurricane season. We always get the effects of hurricane season in the fall, in our early late summer, early fall, and it stays warm as soon as you know, as long as there's hurricanes brewing down in the Caribbean area, around Florida, any of that area pushes warm air up this way. So we get a lot of warm, extra warm, uh, humid, like wet, soggy blanket weather. <laughs> and we get weird storms um, so that monster storm Lee that's out in the Atlantic right now is pushing a lot of crazy um, like you know cloudy rainy weather which is awesome I grew up in California some little mild tangent I grew up in California and oh wait it's gonna crack again crazy right um, I grew up in California and it was very brown there. Everything was brown. We never had green on our hills except for a couple weeks in January when it would rain a lot. So I love it. <laughs> I'm actually like, yay, it's raining. Everything will be green and fresh. And like the parks around here, the grass on the parks looks amazing. It's just, they're getting lots of water and they're looking really bright, vivid green. So pretty. Um, and all the other vegetation and trees and stuff too. So, yeah, there's going to be some crackling and thunder in the background for a few minutes, I think. It'll probably um, move away, but I hope you're doing okay. Hope you're doing well. I am doing pretty good. I started school again, and uh, it's just like, that makes, it just throws like, it's a, a whole new routine, right? You probably know you maybe have kids or grandkids that have started school. It's, you know, you have to sort of change, switches your routine from having no um, during the week routine to having a very much during the week routine. So, yeah, it's been a little bit. It's been, we hit the ground running too, I think. Um, I work in a university, so we go from zero to a hundred. Like, it's, we're just plodding along and then all of a sudden it's like let's go um so we're in the let's go phase and the first couple weeks of few weeks of september are usually a little like just exhausting for me so i haven't done a lot 
done a lot of knitting and I'll be doing a lot of knitting going forward because I'll be in a lot more meetings. Um, I got this. So this is a new cast on. I'm gonna get to that. I know this is, this. I'm very excited about this and really wanna talk about it. But first I'm gonna show, share a couple finished objects. You'll be thrilled to know <laughs> If you're returning and been watching me since July, I finally finished these little shorty socks for um, one of my sons. Um, I like to put socks in my son's um, Christmas stockings. So um, last year I started, I always bought them. So last year I started to knit them. Um, and I use Andrea Mowry's DRK Everyday slash Bear Paw sock pattern. Um, I do a modified version on a needle that's right in between. I needle three, I use a three millimeter, two and a half, US 2.5, um, three, US two and a half, three millimeter. It's a three millimeter needle. Um, yeah, so I use that for the fabric um, using DK weight yarn. Um, in this case, I use two, um, two strands of fingering weight held double and uh, yeah in the what else can I tell you colorway is called Bat Cave it is from Stranded Dye Works um, it is an MCN blend I've had this a very long time I actually made another pair of socks for a friend last year out of them so if you've been around for like seven eight months you might remember that I made these maybe last I might have talked about them last December I made a full, like a high leg, a higher, more like crew neck leg instead of a little shorty. This this boy likes little shorty socks. So, um, so yeah, these are ready for his stocking. And it took me two two months, two months <laughs> to make these, which is ridiculous. I don't have two months to spend on the next four pairs. I only have two and a half months total to get them done. So I am, uh, yeah, I need to hustle. Um, but more about that as we go. I need to get those socks on and off the needles. Like, you know, I should be able to do a pair every couple weeks without too much trouble. So I'm probably gonna have to just concentrate on them more. I also finished this darling love note for my granddaughter, Julie. She is turning three in um, a month. So, this is gonna be one of her birthday gifts. They told me she's wearing size five, so, um, yeah. So I made the size four to six years. Um, it, this is uh, by Tin Can Knits. So there's a really, really huge range of sizes from like zero to six months all the way up to adult, I think I wanna say 55 or 60 inches bust for adults. So yeah, it's, there's a ton of it. Okay, <laughs> there's some chaos going on outside my building, but I think it's okay. We, we just had a couple pretty, pretty close strikes. Um, anyway, okay, I think that's better. I got my studio lights out. Um, and for the other part that's a little dark, I'll try to mess around with it a little bit in editing so it's not too, too bad. So yes, going back to the yarn, I used the yarn that was, um, wow, now you can really see the colors. I used the yarn that was required. It was La Bien Aimee, one strand of um, single ply and one strand of mohair in uh, matching colors. These were colors that, this was a color, these were are the same color just on the mohair versus the single ply. Um, this was a color that she did, I bought in 2018. So these are from, this. Uh, these are quite old. <laughs> Thank you for having a little girl and letting me knit her this very bright, beautiful sweater. Um, anyway, uh, called reunite and it was a special color that she did as a fundraiser so i have um i don't know maybe like a quarter of the mohair left and i didn't use even one skein i have a whole nother skein of this um that i'm gonna now uh put on the spinning wheel and make a two ply out of and it'll be a dk weight and i'll use that for hats or socks 
because uh, usually one skein of DK you can make a pair of socks or a hat pretty nicely. Yeah. Okay, those are my finished objects. And yeah, the uh, Love Note is really fun to knit. I've made another one for her in, um, um, what do you call it? I made it in wor worsted weight. It was also La Bienna May. I just um, knit the pattern using worsted weight instead of using a skein of, or a strand of mohair with single ply. And I meant to show you too, these were what I had left from um, the stranded uh, socks that I made, shorty socks. But bear in mind, I had two full skeins and I already made a pair of crew size uh, shorts, or sorry, socks very distracted right now sorry I'll get it together um, and then I made these I'm just gonna hang on to this for now um, until sorry my cat is behind the camera and he's driving me nuts right now because he's touching every each and everything I have on the bed which is everything I'm planning to show you <laughs> he's really annoying right now bad kitty bad kitty um, yeah, I'm going to hang on to these in case that those are a little too short for him. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll find out um, when I gift him in December. Uh, yeah, moving on. Let's talk about what Martha's wearing. Martha is my mannequin, and she is my size. Um, so she's, uh, it, it's indispensable to have a mannequin. Like if you have room, <laughs> I don't really have room here, but I've got to have one. Um, get a, get a mannequin because they are, um, yeah, really nice to be able to put your knitting or if you're a sewist, you're sewing on to see how things are working and how things are fitting. Okay. This is the Busan pullover sweater busan sweater she called it the busan sweater um do not remember i can only remember the first two letters are ae it's by a danish designer who uh has a few other patterns knit or published she's got a handful of it's not petite knits. It's it's a a I want to say it's aegon aegon a aeon aeon knits or something like that. I'm gonna pop it on screen. I just do not recall the exact spelling or pronunciation <laughs> right now. So I'm just gonna pop it on. I believe the designer's name is Caroline though, um, and she um, yeah. So she she made this pattern, and I saw it on he Hila's knitting journal or Hela Hela um, she is Danish musings on um, YouTube and also I think she's Hela's knitting knitting journal with dots in between on um, Instagram so I've been watching her for a while I really enjoy her her podcast um, she only started recently talking about knitting, which is when I found her. I didn't know about her prior channel, but she does really cool travel blogs. Like, so they took a couple trips, she and her family, and her travel blogs are really fun. You feel like you went there um, because she does such a great job. Uh, but anyway, she was test knitting this sweater, and I was really keenly interested in. Um, in making it so I waited and stalked the designers website and tried to find you know waited and waited for it to be published and uh, the designer published it and then unpublished it so I, I was like ready to I was like think go, thinking through the yarn and everything and trying to figure out what I would make it out of and then she she unpublished it because there were some errors and so it took a few days and she republished it again and I, I picked it up then in terms of the yarn, so she wrote the pattern. This actually was super interesting to for me. The yarn, I really wanted to make this sweater and I the yarn is supposed to be worsted weight. You're supposed to work with a worsted or Aran weight and a strand of mohair. That's what the pattern calls for. And I don't have any sweaters quantities of solid worsted or Aran weight on hand. So I was prepared to purchase this because I really, really wanted to make this sweater. And 
you know if you've been here I'm trying to knit from my stash I'm trying to figure out projects using yarn I have I think I've said before I have enough sweaters quantities to take me through two years <laughs> two years of knitting which isn't a lifetime I know people have lifetimes I'm not judging just saying what I have I also have dozens of single skeins like just a skein of fingering weight dozens we're going to talk more about that in a further on where I also so I tr I do a lot of this like trying to figure out how things will fit how a, I can you know that's a cool pattern I want to make what do I have on my stash I can make that with I think we're getting more thunder in a minute I just saw a flash there it goes hope you're enjoying this I kind of like thunderstorms um as long as they're not causing damage like, don't strike the ground and cause damage. Um, so, I looked at what the yarn she knit it from, and it was this sort of, uh, it kind of reminded me of Shelter in the way that it was like Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, like that sort of spongy, woolen spun, floofy, floofy yarn. So, and... And anyway, I considered <laughs> buying some, not shelter, the yarn that it was, that it was called for. It called for this yarn, I want to say it's called Woolia. And as far as I can tell, it's a fairly new yarn in terms of broad distribution. So there's not, it wasn't going to be easy for me to get here in the U.S. Like if I was in Europe, I think I would have had a better shot. I don't remember the country that it's made in or anything, but um, I, I'll, whatever I, can pull quickly when I'm in editing I'll put on screen um, so yeah I, I there were a couple colors that I would have been okay with and I realized that I was going to also have to buy the mohair so then I was like well this is so I, I did a couple like breeze through like what worsted weights could I get here I looked at the project pages of other knitters there aren't a lot it's a new pattern so there were like maybe 10 project pages and I saw some of the subs they were doing and I was like I, I, I don't know you know I don't know what to do so I I had this this hand spun I'm going to show you just a partial skein I had this hand spun on hand and set aside and I actually had this mohair I had these two set aside I was going to do a test knit of one of my own patterns that I made earlier this year like way way earlier this year in January um, before I knew I was moving <laughs> I guess I knitted in December um, so I had this set aside thinking I was gonna do that as a test knit and I was like you know let me just swatch and see what I get or actually I had already swatched and I knew I had planned to knit it on US size seven needles, which is a four, four oh? No, four oh is size six, so I guess 4.5. And this calls for US size eight, so a five millimeter, is that a five millimeter? I'm not sure, I think it is. I don't know my millimeter so well when we get into the higher range because I don't knit with those that needle size very often and um, I I just thought let me just see maybe maybe this will work it's kind of a long shot because this is a fingering weight at best it's a sport weight it's not it's definitely not even DK I swatched on the US size 8 needles and I hit gauge so I was like hmm that yarn that she knit the pattern out of must be pretty unique and probably is not what it seems in terms of it being an Aran weight. Like it's not a dense Aran weight for sure. It's got to be kind of that squishy woolen spun with lots of air in it and stuff. So I just decided to go for it. I was like, you know, I'll knit. I'll knit to you know a few couple inches beyond the neck and see how it's going 
so far so good. I mean, so I'm making the second size. There, are, This is a pattern that only has four sizes because this is a pattern that, well, I don't know why, but my assumption is that um, it, you're meant to wear it oversized. So it's sort of like that, you know how Junko Okamoto kind of does like a pretty short range because her sweater designs are all meant to be like pretty, pretty oversized on you. Um, so I think this is the same because I think the biggest size goes up to somewhere in the 50 inch range, like somewhere in that 55, 60 inch range. Um, I decided to knit the second size, which is supposed to be 44, 45 inches finished. And um, I'm a 40 inch bust. So there's a lot of ease here. So not only did I get gauge, um, I think I'm, I was slightly concerned that it wasn't going to fit quite right because I was worried that it would, you know, maybe be a little snugger. Like maybe sometimes gauge when you make a swatch, even if you make a big one, and I made a pretty big one. Um, I don't think I have them here. I don't. You're, you're still like, sometimes things can still not be quite right. So I'm happy that it, that all worked out. Um, and it was super surprising to me that I could work with like, let's just call it a sport weight and a strand of mohair and hit gauge and have really nice fabric. So it's not like there's a lot of, you know, you're not seeing, I mean, I guess the Aaron weight that she made it out of, it would have just been a little bit denser fabric, but this is still really nice fabric. Um, I guess you'll have to take my word. If I can remember, I'll take some, I'll take some close up footage so you can see what I'm talking about. Maybe the lighting will be better then. Maybe the storm will have passed. Um, yeah. So when I realized that I could use this yarn for this pattern, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be so amazing. Um, because I, you know, it's, it's a raglan. It's just a raglan with a little mock neck turtle, ne uh, like a mock neck neckline, and this big, fat, chunky cable down the front. And I was just like, this is just going to be so, so good. So good. And I knew I would get some sort of like color changing striping effect. I mean, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I've been obsessively knitting because I'm always just like, I want to see what happens next in the fabric. It's just been a real nice adventure um, with the fabric. And when, actually, when I was doing the neck, I was just like, oh my God. Sorry, I need to redirect Kitty. Um, I was going to make off with a note that I made myself so I remember all the things I want to talk to you about. So, yeah, that, uh, this has just been, like, kind of this serendipitous, <laughs> everything just came together really well. Um, and so, yeah, um, hand, so my hand spun, some, some cool facts about my hand spun. I think I spun this two years ago, I want to say, like around this time of year, two years ago, and, or maybe more. It, this was some of the first fleece I bought. So I learned how to spin in 2019. I probably bought this fleece, this uh, indie dyed comb top from Stitch Together Studio. She, I don't know if she dyes anymore because I know she was going to study to become a tattoo artist. So I think she stopped um, dyeing pretty much like I think she still has products but I don't think she dyes yarn anymore or fiber but anyway she had I had purchased it from her and it's a Targi blend I think it's Targi and silk might have a little silk um, and it was the like these really bold sort of orange and green dark green limey green like everything that you're seeing on screen like so hit little you know sections that were purple little sections that were like neon green um but also lots of white interspersed and then I put with it another um some other like another four ounces of comb top that I had gotten from Kim Dye's yarn 
she does dye all the time. I love her color sense. She's, I buy a lot of my fleece from her, but she also makes beautiful, beautiful yarn. The colors that she does, her colors are very consistent and the colors that she does in her fleece, she also does in yarn and they're gorgeous. And she does like a color of the month and stuff. So you probably already know about her, but she's amazing and definitely worth um, checking out if you're not familiar. He's so devilish. He is so devilish. He's driving me crazy. He's decided to get under the blanket now um, that I have on the bed and everything's on top and he's starting to knock everything. You're a devil. You're a devil. So anyway, yeah, so I took um, another four ounces. So I had eight ounces of this from Stitch Together Studio and then I had four ounces from Kim Dye's yarn that was mostly white and it had pops of bright orange and pink. So I was like, okay, this is all gonna go together. Um, and that was uh, BFL, I think, and Silk. So I put those all together to make this gorgeous yarn, what you're seeing here. Oh my God, can you stop? Can you just go do something else besides hang out with me? Like just go take a nap or something. That's what you need to do. <laughs> I'm always telling him to take a nap. Um, I think the, the rain has him all riled up. So yeah, that's the story of this. And if I can remember in editing, I will put some links maybe to the, if you're interested in how I made the yarn, there's an episode a couple years back where I talked about it. Um, and then the mohair I actually purchased at Vogue Netting Live this year. When I went in February, it's by an Italian company called DHG. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this at the, oh yeah. Thank you, Studio Lights. DHG, it's called Fluffy. And it's natural, I think, or undyed, um, you know. And I had actually purchased it to put it together with this because I just thought this would look good together. Um, and uh, yeah, I have more undyed white mohair. I bought only three skeins of this and I'm on my second skein and second skein. I don't know if I'm gonna even crack into the third skein, um, although, because this is oversized, these sleeves are massive. Look at them. <laughs> I was just like, here's here's the here's the armpit way up here, and here's where like a t-shirt armpit is right here. So actual armpit here, here, t-shirt armpit here, sweater armpit way down here. I hope that doesn't make me too crazy. Um, the fit like I said, it's supposed to be oversized. So yeah. Oh, and the other fun thing that this pattern has is this kind of shirt tail. I'm in the middle of changing. If you're seeing those needles, I'm in the middle of switching over to the ribbing uh, needle and I just stopped so I could put it on the, on Martha and you'd see it. So yeah, there's this like, it's meant to be five inches, but I, I stopped after three inches. I was like, that's more than enough. Cause there's still gonna be another inch and a half of ribbing. So here's, you know, my widest part right here. <laughs> and then there's rib. Um, so it's gonna hang down kind of low. I'm, I'm into it though. Like, I think that'll be good. I don't think I would have liked another two inches of that though. I think that would have been too much um, overhang for me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these sleeves are pretty big. Who knows? I may crack into the third skein of this, but I don't think I'll use more than that because these are almost 500 yards. Uh, now my cats are fighting. They bicker. They bicker like siblings. It's really annoying. I wish they were best buddies, but they're not. Someday maybe? I don't know. Maybe never? I'm not counting on it. Although maybe as he, maybe as my little, my little guy is eight months, maybe when he gets to be over a year and gets out of this kitten stage, it'll be a little better. Um, Cause he just wants to play all the time. And my older cat's just like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh boy. Um, okay, hopefully you can't hear them. Uh, I'm getting riled up over there. The thunder's still going too though. I don't know if you hear that. Uh, all right, so yeah, that is that. Um, oh, that is that project. But I did want to tell you a couple of other mods I did besides making the shirt tail hem in the back a little bit uh, shorter. Um, I also reduced some of the uh, yoke shaping. So that's the thing like that I've noticed not with Ann Vinzel. I made one of her patterns and that was one that where the yoke shaping is just on a raglan. It's just this like it's just this long line and you just keep going until you get the number of stitches you need in the bust like that seems to be the mentality so the fit is a little weird to me like it's not as good as it would be if you did instead of doing a lines like this you do rapid increases at the top to get the, the width and then down it, it kind of assumes like all everyone who all women all women who are, who are gonna wear this or men or whatever don't have any shoulders like if I had no shoulders that sort of shape would be really great I think in this case the idea is that it's supposed to be oversized so you're you're you want that long those long long raglan these long raglan increases so I reached a point where I hit 10 inches which is the longest yoke I want to wear and I was like, okay, I'm done. And I just um, did rapid increases to get to the stitch count that I needed. So that was one mod I did. So I would just caution you, like, if you're gonna make a pattern like this, it's good to know what you like. So you can do some modifications to get um, the fit you like and you don't end up disappointed. So that's what happened to me with Ann Benzel's pattern. It was my first time knitting that type of raglan where you're just increasing at a regular rate from the neck, from neck trim all the way down to the armpit. And it just ended up being too narrow for me across the across here. Like this part was just like, I was like, I can't lift my arms. Um, so I gave it away to uh, my niece who's smaller than I am. And it fit her, it looked great on her. I don't know if she had any issues with it. That was also color work. So the fabric didn't have as much give. So I was less worried about that with this because this is not color work. It's just, and it's kind of a loose gauge. So for fingering weight and um, yeah, I was like, well, I can stretch it, but I don't even need to worry about that. I have so much extra ease in here and it will kind of broaden the cable will relax in blocking so I'm actually gonna get even more width here um, yeah so those are a couple mods I made um, the other thing I did was I I never do German short rows if it's calling for short rows I don't do I always do wrap and turn um, not because they're easy but because they're I've tried many different types of short rows I think I've tried Japanese German Wrap and turn. I feel like there's another one in there. Wrap and turn for me, I like it because you don't see where the turn was. Where I always with German, I don't know if I wasn't doing it right. Maybe I was never doing it right, but you could always see where the turn was, and I didn't like that. So I love wrap and turn because you can never see where the um, wrap is if you resolve the wrap correctly so I, I filmed a little clip today where I was resolving the wraps and I don't know if there's an easier way to do it but I always just make sure that the wrap is behind the stitch so if the wrap is behind the stitch you're never gonna see it and it, your fabric is gonna look amazing like just smooth no holes or um, no bulk from three stitch you know three strands instead of two um yeah so it's really good i like it a lot but it, it's uh it like i said it's a little fiddly you do have to kind of like whenever i lift up that wrap it's never in the right place like i want it behind to sit behind the stitch as long as it sits behind the stitch you're never gonna see it promise <laughs> this is why so if it says anything for short rows I'm doing wrap and turns the only thing you need to remember when you do German short rows um, if it says go three stitches or on the third stitch do a German short row when you do wrap and turn 
you can't you don't do as many right yeah if you're doing if you would do a German shirt or every third stitch you would actually do a wrap and turn every second stitch um, because wrap and turn takes an extra stitch um, if that makes sense I think that's the rule I think I got that right please correct me down in the comments if you know better um because I know there's some experts people who are more expert than me watching I think anyway okay I do have a couple updates on other um works in progress so I'm going to grab those now let me show the other one that I'm most excited about um I've made a little progress on my second tessellated vest by the tessellated vest by Andrea Mowry. Last time I showed it to you, it was a brand new cast on. Um, so I've done a little bit. I would have probably have done more if I didn't do this. This is going to be done very soon. Um, it's just so beautiful. I can't wait for it to just be hanging out on Martha while I, you know, over the next few weeks. Um, so yeah, this is my second tessellated vest by Andrea Mowry, and I am making it out of some brand new yarn from Les Garçons called British Sport, and I'm making it out of Mora's Black Rose. It's a really deep dark black, so it's a um, BFL, I want to say. Does it say on here that it's BFL? Or does it just say that it's, maybe I can read it better if I hold it up for you. Morris Black Rose. Yeah, BFL Masham. That's what it is. <laughs> Cannot read it at all, but if I put it on screen, I can. BFL Masham um, blend, which is, I think, consistent across all of their British wool lines. So they have a British fingering weight. I know they have a sport. I think they have a DK as well. They might have a heavier one, like an Aran. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, they're, I love them. Every time they have any, their happy hour <laughs> podcast, I'm watching it. Um, it is so good and so fun. They're just a fun pair to um, listen to. And they're so creative and they do a bunch of different stuff. And I just love it. Just love it. Um, so yeah, and I am also using some Spin Cycle. This is a, uh, for, to me, a very lackluster spin cycle. Um, this is actually the colorway Castaway, and I ordered it in a mystery package. Last year, I ordered it in, during their seconds sale, and the seconds part of it wasn't the color. The seconds was that there's some slubs in it, so in the yarn. So I, I've already, I can see a couple here. I can see at least one here. I already knit past one um, but yeah this I'm gonna put on screen what this is supposed to look like it's supposed to be like kind of this turquoisey rust um, skein but yeah instead I got like this kind of steely gray blue with a very washed out rust rust but it's okay it's okay um, I thought about this these colors um, purposefully picked this very dull, <laughs> neutral, more neutral than not skein of spin cycle. I chose it to knit the vest um, with this, with this very vivid Fua Fua from Moondrake Yarn Company um, in the colorway Sprouts. So very vivid poppy green greens are really in right now like very popular and I thought this would be like such a great way to um to use it so it's not all over that color but it's kind of mixed in with this um with these neutrals with black and gray and I'll have a little bit of this like sort of what do you call that terracotta I guess terracotta color in there too um, I'll probably need a little bit of other yarn because I don't think one skein is going to be enough. And I do have some dribs and drabs of spin cycle that are gray. And I have another skein that's a lot of gray. So I think I'm just going to... The other one has some green interspersed in it, um, which will be fine because it'll go with this. So um, I think it'll be, it'll be fine. I'm not worried. 
Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at on the tessellated. I, yeah, moving along, moving along on that. Getting past the rib on the tessellated. Oh, oh, that's the other thing, talking about the rib. Um, I did mod modify this one. The last one I made, the only modification I made was I made it a little longer and I made the rib longer too. Made the whole body longer by an inch and a half and I made the ribbing longer by double. So she calls for an inch and a half rib and I made it three. I did the same thing here. Um, but this time around I used fewer stitches. So I went down one size when I cast on the rib. But I was gonna say the rib takes forever because you're knitting on three millimeter needles or even two seven five millimeter. I think she calls for, I used a two and a half, 2.5 because I, I like that size. <laughs> um, two and a half, which is a 3.3 millimeter. Um, but man, it takes forever. Those are teeny stitches. Those are very small stitches with a fingering weight yarn. And um, it just felt like a slog getting through the rib. Now that I'm on the colors, I'll, I'll be more engaged. This is more a more engaging piece um, that I'll be working on. So anyway, I cut the rib amount because it just seemed to me that my other one, it's fine, but it was kind of like the rib was just kind of hanging off my body and not really hugging. And I thought that was kind of strange. <laughs> so I was like, I think I want less fabric here. Um, so I just went down one size, knit the rib on the, with that stitch count and then when I got to the final row there's one row that you do um, in the main color where you're just doing stockinette in that row I added back all the stitches to get to the size so it was like 24 stitches I added back in um, to get to the size that I um, I'm making um, for the rest of the body um, okay this is another piece. I think this will start to go much more quickly. It needs to because it needs to be done by December and I can't, you know, just work on one stitch repeat between episodes because it'll never get done. <laughs> it'll get done in February or something like that. So I did one stitch repeat. Um, this is Chevronopolis. I think Chevron, 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 Polis, Chevron. I think it's Chevronopolis is the way to say it. Uh, on screen by Maxim Seer of Les Garçons. Um, it's a shawl that I am making for one of my children, one of my sons. Um, I cast it on a month ago and I went through one repeat. I've now done two repeats. So two of these, so this motif and this motif, those two together are the repeat. Um, I can see like the first, the first, it, and the repeat is like over 50, it's, I said 64 rows last time, it's not that long, it's 50, minus 9, minus 8 from that, 56 rows, it's a 56 row repeat, so doing that first set of 56 rows was like, I, I couldn't, I mean, I had to read the pattern like every second, because every row for 56 rows you're doing something different and I couldn't get it I just like the pattern wasn't clicking but now that I've done a second repeat I get it I understand the way the pattern the way the stitches shift and I think it'll and plus you're doing the same thing all the way across so although each row is different in the row you're doing like a pretty small pretty short repeat um, so it's not as bad um, row by row and the rows are going to grow so the rows will get slowly bigger and bigger and this will be like I think it'll end up being this shape like the shape that you're seeing it'll just be much bigger like big enough to wrap around your body uh, once and maybe around your neck like twice um, so yeah this is a very hand spun hand spinny episode because this is also I'm also using hand spun here um, I am using I'll, I'll talk about the non-hand spun first. I'm using this um, countdown calendar color from 2021 from Magpie Fibers. It was called Winter Solstice. And I said last time, and it's true still, <laughs> it will continue to be true, that this skein basically encompasses all my son's favorite colors. These are his favorite colors. These purples and blues, these like very bright colors. Um, so I went through my stash. The uh, fabric 
or the pattern calls for a spin cycle, which is a color changing yarn, as we know. And I pulled out some hand spun that I had spun and it's color changing. So I actually have three skeins of this and this will use at probably two skeins of it. Maybe, maybe a little bit more, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready for it to change colors. Like <laughs> it's changing colors a little bit. Like, wait, oh my gosh, I can't, can't keep everything on my lap. And I'm paranoid about bad kitty. He's around. I think he, maybe he finally went to take a nap. Um, so the, yeah, you can see that it changed right here. Like there was a, a more muted, um, greeny blue and now it's going to this like brighter turquoise like from about there up um, and then from there it'll change to like a golden rust color and then to burgundy and then a green and then back to a bright turquoise like even brighter and I don't remember what the other skeins <laughs> repeat are um, but I spun this in a two ply using two bullseye bats i talked about it last time from loop fiber studio and uh, those are very cool um i'll pop a picture on screen of what they look like before you spin them so they if you spin it in order you end up with a color striping yarn and i had one bullseye bat that was mostly shades of turquoise like shades of blue and then i had another skein that was um very variegated so you're kind of seeing that so there's a ply of one of those shades of blue in each um, stripe and then there's also a uh, ply of one of the other colors so I was gonna show you real quick but <laughs> I pulled out the wrong yeah so like shade of blue going all the way through and then um, the other one was you know different different colors so like this brown this burgundy this green I think the shades of blue are also mixed with gray if I'm, if I'm not mistaken or there may have been gray there was definitely gray in both of them <sighs> yes okay last uh, whip new cast on also hand spun yarn same child <laughs> I'm making his socks for his stocking. Um, he has, he's a size 13 shoe, so big feet, big kid, big, um, big man, actually. Um, is that PC to say? I guess so, right? Big guy, he's a big guy. So yeah, I just cast on the first sock using some hand spun, which I think is going to gently stripe as you're seeing. So like kind of a, it's a, definitely a moral, yarn so blue and shades of brown the skein really reminds me a lot of like what a blue flannel shirt would look like like the colors in a blue flannel shirt so usually they mix in brown and burgundy and you're definitely getting that he picked this up when i was like i was showing they were over and i was showing them yarn and asking like and my other son picked out those the other colors i was asking them like what do you think i'm thinking about making socks again do any of these resonate with you and so yeah um <clears throat> he picked them out so yeah I'm, i just started the ribbing on this toe and the same deal like a uh, kind of a hybrid of um the drk everyday sock and bear paw put together on a th uh, three millimeter needle which is my preferred <clears throat> recipe i guess dk yarn Three millimeter needle two by two although I was watching Amy of the fat squirrel podcast or YouTube channel and I just love her she's another one as soon as it's on I'm running to watch it <laughs> I'm like I gotta watch that yay um and she had a sock that she's knitting out of self striping yarn that was like kind of a bubble pattern so I'm gonna check it out um, it was by a designer who I am familiar with and I don't know there was something mildly sort of alarm bell-ish for me I can't remember what it is but it was a pretty sock just having a little water on this very warm day even though it's raining and thundering out it's still like in the 80s <laughs> Fahrenheit 
All right, that is um, all of my knitting. Quite a lot, I felt very productive. Um, last time I complained that I did not get um, much spinning done and that I was having a, I was having a bit of a slump in my spinning. And I think just talking about it was enough to make me kind of go take a second look at some of my stash and see. Um, because I was really, I think I was saying like people were making, coming off of Tour de Fleece, I was seeing in my feed a lot of like these very beautiful, when you think of what hand spun yarn looks like, these very beautiful hand spun yarns. And that's kind of like what you're seeing here. This is, and bright and colorful um, fleece and stuff. And I was looking at mine and going, I don't really have anything that's really bright and colorful. I have a couple bright colorful bats, but bats, I don't really like spinning bats as much as I like spinning comb top or roving. Um, or even Rolex, I would prefer to spin Rolex than bats. Bats are just really messy and I, they're beautiful to look at, gorgeous, but not so fun to spin, at least for me. Um, so I, I am actually, I have a bat on my mind. I know exactly where it is. That's part of the problem with some of my spinning is that my spinning stash is shoved away in these clo these very disorganized closets that I have here because I have yet to have the worker come in and fix them. Um, I recently moved, if you're new here, I recently moved, I've talked a lot about it in the last few months. Um, I don't have very many updates, I don't have any updates really on the house, because I'm still waiting for this dude to come and build me new closets. So when that happens, I think everything will be a lot more um, simpatico, I guess, <laughs> like just uh, everything will make sense. At least so I think. At least like I'll be able to see what I have and I'll, if I have too much, I'll be able to cut back more. Like there, I have stuff that I don't need to keep um, forever and ever in those closets, but I held on to them because they're valuable to me and I would like to hang on to them if I have space. But if I don't, I'll be cutting them out. So yeah, that's part of my spin problem, my lack of spinning incentive to spend but I think my other lack of incentive to spend is just not knowing what I want to make with stuff and um, letting that get in the way of my joy for, for spending so I ha talking to you all two weeks ago really helped like being able to just it felt very cathartic to be able to just unload and just say hey this is a problem I'm having I didn't even need you to respond <laughs> I just needed to say it and feel heard and that was it. So I did do some spinning. I went um, and looked at some stash that was easily accessible and I spun a skein of sock yarn um, for me. So it's a DK weight um, and it's actually a 70-30 superwash, I believe superwash, yeah, superwash merino nylon blend. So um, I got it from Le Petite Potions. She's a dyer who no longer dyes. She was a French designer, or dyer, um, hence the French name. Um, I cannot remember what that means. I know Enchante is enchanted. I can't remember what cabin might mean wood. I don't know. Cabin? Um, but it's green. <laughs> it's sort of this like copper patina. That's what it reminds me of. Um, the colors. It's just like, go, it, yeah, like the Empire State Build, not Empire, uh, Statue of Liberty or Penny that you've probably, like if you have an old Penny that's been gotten wet, it'll look like, it'll be these colors, like sort of this green patina, copper copper patina color with mixed with copper. So yeah, I spun this up in a, day and felt better about spinning and I pre prepped a new um, skein to make that I'm going to do the same. This was, I did fractal with this. Actually, I don't, I don't even think I did fractal. I think I just spun it because it was so mottled with the brown, like it was just mostly dyed green with these mottled brown that I 
there wasn't any point. It was just two colors, so there wasn't any point in doing fractal. But I set up another. I realized that I really like fractal. I like the way fractal spun looks, and I also like d making it. I like making fractal spun um, yarn. Not to say that there's not occasions that I'll spin other things. I will, um, but that that's my preference, I guess. This was fractal spun too. Um, fractal spun is when you, it's mathematical, so you do like a one to two ratio, whatever you decide. So um, when you're spinning comb top, which is a long strip, you would, you wanna do a two ply, you divide it in two straight lengthwise all the way down um, to keep the colors lined up. And then you do, um, if you're doing a two, let's just stick with two ply because it's easier. Um, the one ply might be one where you just spin from one end to the other and the other one you're going to divide in half again and then spin those two one spin one then spin the other and then you put those together you ply them together and you get like kind of this mix, mix match kind of what like spin cycle does so like that kind of vibe or this kind of vibe this was a lot of colors <laughs> so there's a lot going on there um, but I kind of like the little micro striping and stuff that's happening in the in the knit. And it's less micro stripey up here because the rows were sh fewer stitches. Um, so yeah, that is uh, that's what's happening here in um, in knitting and all of that. Uh, I did get some new stash. These were I talked about these a while ago. I joined the last quarter of Ritual Dye's tarot card um, dye club where you could choose either fingering weight or DK and again like my concept of a skein of DK is great for a hat or a pair of socks. Um, I joined for DK and uh, I got both August and September within a couple days. It was, um, there was like a sh shipping snafu. Um, with them, it, it was kind of like I didn't realize that I never got August, but this is August. I, oh, I meant to grab um, July. So this is August. It's, it's based on the, sorry, Ritual Dyes um, and their priestess base on the card, The Lovers. So you can see that there. And I think it's just 100% Superwash Merino. Yeah. Fine, superwash fine merino wool. It's a four ply, it's 250 yards. Um, so, yeah, it's just this really pretty lavender and rust color, terracotta, whatever you want to call it, brick maybe. Um, and there's some beautiful, like, kind of brown golden speckles in the, in the rusty area. Really pretty. This must be like terracotta episode two <laughs> um and the i got i also got september which is based on the card death so it's like kind of a more moody rose with um gray and gray speckles and black speckles too so yeah it's a you know mystery club you don't know what card they're going to be based on and you don't know the colors of course because all decks, you know, look different. So I don't even know what deck they're referencing. They might have talked about it in the first quarter. I just kind of copped on and I was like, oh, I have all these socks I need to knit. I don't have a lot of DK on hand. Let me just get some, gather some so I can use some for, for socks. So, um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing the it again, I understand. I saw on Instagram. I didn't see it on their website. I'm not planning to join the next round of them but they are continuing the series for another year. And so I, presumably there'll be a shipment in October. And they, they do it so that I think you can join, you can, you can end it at any time. So if you decide you don't want, like, or maybe they do by the quarter and they bill you once a month um, across the quarter. So you're not paying all at once. You, they bill you you provide information, payment information, they bill you, and then they ship it within a couple days. Uh, so what happened to me with August was they billed me, 
And then there was this long pause where I didn't get any shipment and then suddenly September's appeared. <laughs> so they billed me again and September's appeared and I was like, what happened to August? <laughs> so I went back to look through my records, emailed them and they were amazing. Like I emailed them like 11, I know they're East Coast versus West Coast, so three hour time difference, but it was like 11 p.m. at night that I emailed and just said, hey, looks like I didn't get this one. I got this one and this one, but I didn't get this one in between. And then I couldn't find any shipping on it. So it wasn't like it was lost. I said, I just don't think it ever got shipped. And I woke up the next morning and I had a shipping notification, like it was on the way. And then it, about a day or so later, I got an email back saying, we took care of it, your yarn's on the way. So I thought that was pretty, pretty good. Great customer service um, from them. I have one other quick thing that I don't won't spend too much time on, but there was interest. I shared some drawing last week, so and there was interest on um, what the meaning is, and so I thought I would talk a little bit about it. This is the art that I ended up making. I do have other art in my head, swimming around in my head, that I need to get out on paper. Um, I just need some time where my head's not full of other stuff. So after like the intro to the school year stuff kind of settles into place and I get into a routine again it'll be easier to be creative doing things where I'm not just like okay I just have to put my head down and do this um so yeah this was this piece that I had been I'd been thinking about for quite some time and I just never made time to draw it um and I showed last week a clip or last episode a clip of me kind of working my way through figuring out what it was you know I wanted to do and my concept was to just do sorry I should also say if you're new here I um I studied to be an artist <laughs> is why I have an M MFA um and I mostly I mostly did 3d stuff like sculpture um but I did I do also draw and I've never painted like that's one thing I've never done but paint drawing illustrating um things like that so Anyway, I thought I would just do like a real quick, what was my intention? So the thing with art is that um, usually there's some, there's some, in, there, there's always intention. So in order to make art, there's always intention. And part of the fun of art is looking at a piece and s matching what you see, what you as a viewer sees versus the artist's intention. And sometimes like in order to understand the artist's intention you need more information from the artist themselves to tell you the context of their intention and we always say that a successful piece of art would so I also have taught art too I should I guess I should say so I'm trying to not be too teachery here but I just thought I would share a couple things that maybe would help you understand my intention um, before I share what my intention is my um, we always say that like a successful piece of art is a piece of art that you when you you gaze upon it you're in, interested in it enough to look at it longer than 10 seconds and you're you may you may look at it for a while who knows how long a couple minutes or whatever but it's successful if days later you're still thinking about it more successful the longer you keep thinking about it if the you know circling not that you're constantly thinking about it but maybe your head in your head you're like you might like it might pop into your head and you might be like that that was a really cool artwork that i was looking at that was a really cool piece i really enjoyed looking at that piece um and you know there are pieces that will stick with you if you look at a lot of art on a regular basis there are pieces that will stick with you for years so there's some pieces I can remember seeing years ago that I'm still like wow that was amazing that was such a great piece so that's what we would how we would determine whether or not a piece is successful things that you see and you forget about not as successful not that it won't wouldn't be successful for someone else but it wasn't successful for you as a viewer and if no one's talking about your work and you're an artist then that's also not good so you want pieces like so no one makes art to just keep in a closet we all make art to show 
um, to have on display to enhance our spaces or other people's spaces or to give, you know, we get excited when other people are excited about seeing our work. Um, I, for a lot, a lot of years, I had many, many art shows and um, participated in group, many, many group shows. And w so I was an exhibiting artist. I stopped because, yeah, I just, my attention was divided and I never could make making art my full-time job. So I have a full-time job. I have family. So I never really was able to stop and just make art and just like put all this energy in. So creating a show, making a show, putting pull, pulling a show together, making art for a show, it's a lot of work. It's months of work, months and months of work. And it would mean that would be all I would do um, in my spare time because I'm also working. So I, um, I stopped, I just stopped. I stopped making all work. Um, I made a, I do jewelry too. So I made a few pieces of jewelry here and there for friends or whatever, and then I, um, yeah, I just don't really do much. So just for my own self and for, you know, if people are interested, if anybody came in my house and fell in love with a piece that I made, I would probably let them have it. They could just take it um, because I can always get, I always make more art. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I had just, this was just a burning desire to draw a line an organic line in such a way that it would invoke the idea of a landscape or of a profile or structure. I was deliberately ambiguous with this line. I also envisioned exactly what you're seeing here, a black smudgy line on a white piece of paper. Um, and that was it. That's it. This is the whole work. <laughs> this is the piece. And I could see how this could be a series. Like maybe there's more. Um, I really love organic shapes. So organic shapes are things that are not, I love geometric shapes too, though. It's not, it's either geometric or organic generally. Um, so organic will have like bumps and lumps and curves. Um, so I love that. But I do also love a good geometry. Um, so yeah, this is uh, my intention behind this piece. And I did, after I drew it and smudged it and got it looking good, I sprayed it, sprayed the paper with a fixative so that it's charcoal, charcoal on paper. So it's sprayed with a fixative that will hold the charcoal on the paper and it won't be able to be smudged anymore. Um, but this is also meant to hang on a wall, which is where I had it. That's the way I hung it with these clips. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's my piece. I do have others in mind that I also want to make. And uh, I will hopefully uh, get those on paper soon. Um, I also realized, like, so... It's MCAL season. It is. I know there's people out there. I follow Roz on Instagram. If you don't haven't watched her channel, Roseman Knits, check it out. It's so good. I love Roz. We love the same type of colors. <laughs> like these are the colors here. I would say that you often see in her work. Um, so I know the MCAL is a big deal for her. She always inspires me with her choices or color choices and stuff and I really wanted to participate I didn't participate last year and I was really glad I didn't because that twist and turn shawl looked pretty like there was a moment where he had knitters doing some really different things and I was just like oh hell no I would not have liked that <laughs> so I was like I'm glad I didn't do that one um, but he called this, this is a, he called it geo gradient. It's a geo gradient. And I was like, it's going to be geometric. It's going to be so good. And it's a gradient. Like what's not to love? Like, ah, oh, love a good gradient. So I did do a little digging in my stash. I said to myself, if I can find the yarn in my stash, I'm going to make it. Otherwise I'm not going to buy any more single skeins of fingering 
yarn, fingering weight yarn, because I have about 50 or so skeins, 60 maybe, in my stash. And I want to use them, right? So I'm like, perfect, four skeins. Then I saw his video about colors where he said they should be solids. You don't want to use a bunch of speckles because they'll be too blendy. Um, and you're any, you want to see those lines for those geometric shapes. So I, I went through, I have a mini skein advent from last year, from 2022. That is a gradient. I pulled it out. I'm just going to tell you an over, I'm going to overlay some footage that I shot because I was planning, I was hoping it was going to work. So I shot footage thinking I was going to share with you that I was going to cast it on. And these are my colors. Spoiler, I'm not casting it. I won't be making it. I'm sorry to say. Not, not during the MCAL anyway. So I went, I went through, pulled out the, I pulled out the mini skein set, 24 skeins. A lot of speckled colors. I pulled out my jar of mini skeins, which is what you're what you saw on the thumbnail for this video. Pulled out that and tried to put together colors that were like enough because I'd be fine with like some shading out a little bit, like if I could just get a collection that were kind of similar, maybe having a little bit of speckles. I thought that would be fine. I didn't have more than three skeins, three mini skeins of any one color and I couldn't make any of them work. They just wouldn't work. So I was faced with the choice of if I'm going to participate in this MCAL I need to go buy yarn. And then when I was looking at the kits I just couldn't imagine wearing a shawl out of any of those kits. Like finished shawl in any one color. I really liked the kits that had one off color. So it was like three shades of blue with lime green, something like that. I was like, that's cool and interesting. Um, so I really wanted something that had a little bit of an off color. And they, um, I just couldn't pull the trigger, couldn't make myself do it. And I thought to myself, like, if I'm gonna do, if I'm not gonna do a, a true gradient where it's like four shades of pink, like, brought my color wheel over, like, these four colors or these four colors. If it wasn't gonna be those, like, I thought, you know what, I'm better off waiting to see the pattern to see if I can make kind of a, like, cause I was thinking to myself like, oh, I really want like turquoise and red violet and yellow and lime green or something. I was like, I want these very four discordant colors. I don't really wanna do a gradient. And I was like, why am I going to, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not going to buy these colors and then see the pattern and go, wow, this really doesn't work. And I wish I just did four shades of blue. So I just figured I'd wait. So I'm just watching. I'm watching with interest. It's so interesting to me too, like the push, the push I feel to participate because it just seems like everyone so many people are participating like yarn indie dyers are showing you their choices and knitters are talking about their choices and it's really hard to resist it's really hard to resist if i have enough things to knit i've got to get some gift knitting done so i'm just like i know it's the right choice for me i'm gonna watch with interest and um maybe after they've been, you know, maybe that when they're halfway through, I might jump on. I don't know. Like once I can kind of see, I kind of want to see what the whole, what the pattern is going to look like before I commit <laughs> to, um, a shawl's quantity of yarn. Um, speaking of comments, someone left me a comment to watch We Grow Wilds, um, YouTube channel because they're renovating a, a an Italian villa or home. Looks like a villa to me. Maybe it's just a house in uh, Italy. So I checked it out. Talk about like, th I can't stop thinking about all the work they're doing. It's just crazy. And they put out a video. It sh the woman is a knitter. I don't remember her name. She's a knitter and her partner is not a knitter, but he's the two of them are doing this house together. 
and they've been putting out a video about once a week of like um, things that they got done or once every two weeks things that they worked on in this house they are really like not what I'm doing here at all like it, I have walls and a ceiling and lights and they don't even have electricity or internet or windows so it's kind of crazy but it, I yeah thank you for whoever gave me that recommendation I tried to figure out who had done it but I, YouTube doesn't sort the comments in an easy way for me to search through them so um, yeah thanks for that recommendation I appreciate that all right I think that's all I got for you today um, I'm gonna leave you with some video clips of there was the a super moon last week um, at night uh, on a Wednesday night and I was out teaching and I came back and it was rising up over Manhattan and so I got a little quick video clip of that um, everyone was out there were so many people out on the w boardwalk or walkway um, that is in my neighborhood um, doing pictures it was very fun I was just like I love my neighborhood so much um, so yeah it was like a fun little and then I think I have some sunset footage for you to check out but I will see you soon I'll see you again in um, in two weeks with uh, an update on content I hope to have a finished object <laughs> at least one if not more and uh, yeah hope all is well in your neck of the woods and that you know you're doing wonderfully or you're on the mend if you've been sick or whatever See you next time. Bye.